Hello, hello, hello. I'm back. It's been a while. I'm sorry about that. Um, I've been a little bit busy with work and I also had to, I was in New York this weekend, but I'm back. So on my previous video, one of the followers mentioned that they thought that having both Collector Company and Aether Vial in the green white deck was a little bit too much and I thought that was a very interesting uh, thing to point out and, and uh, so I've been thinking about it since and uh, I think that this person is actually right so now we're gonna try and play it without the Aether Vials and just play with the Collector Company so we're still gonna play a lot of the same creatures so we still have the four Arbiters still just three Thalia's main a scavenger uses voice resurgence um but now we're packing the full four mirroring crusaders and now i'm also playing four lux and smiter instead of the flicker wisp so the flicker wisp is definitely only really really strong when you play vile and it's a little bit clunky when you don't um so i thought we'd give it a try without also this is awesome um because now that we don't have vile to go play around counter spells at least now we have uh the smiter to do so let me just check. I'm actually live. I am. Great. Um, and so I've added uh, two Birds of Paradise to help us accelerate out um, our three drops and our collector companies. And then the mana base is very similar, uh, except that I've cut one planes to play a Gavin Township, um, which I think would be very interesting to play as well. The sideboard, um, very similar to the other sideboard I played except that I've now playing a single Relic of Progenitus to play, uh, to match up against Junt. And I've added two core Firewalkers as well, because I really think that the burn matchup is really bad, and I kind of want um, two extra sideboard cards against that. So we still have two Kitchen Fings in main. Um, so I think the two Kitchen Fings here and the core Firewalkers should give us enough sort of like to to battle against the the burn strategies um anything else yeah i don't know it's it's um i'm excited to see how how well this will actually work without the the vials another thing so it the few times i actually well so i record these um videos just by streaming them Right, that's how I've been doing it so far, and the last time people were actually writing in the uh, in the chat section without me noticing it. So, I thought this time I would just have the chat up in case someone actually were gonna say something. I don't know if it, if if anyone's actually gonna watch it, but just in case, I'll have the uh, the chat open here. I'm still working on getting a um, a second screen for my for my computer so that I can sort of like record like I would normally do, and then also have the the chat on on the side. Um, let me just look at the previous version of the deck to see if there's any obvious differences. Um, not massively. Okay, so I've already joined a league. So I think we just sort of like try and find an opponent and jump straight into it. I'm really excited to see how how the this deck works without the vials. Um, oh yeah, so so another thing. So I personally think that that uh, Junt is by far the best deck right now, and so the the Aether Vials actually don't do that much because they play you know they play Codagon's Command, and they don't play any counter spells. So so it's just a very sort of like a, a fragile card to have in your deck, and um, Lux and Smiter is also incredible against Junt because when they tick up the Liliana, um, we can just put one of these directly into play which is uh, pretty awesome. So instead of getting, you know, card disadvantage, we actually just gain uh, four mana, or oh, sorry, three mana, which is awesome. Okay, so we uh, we found an opponent. I'm just gonna correct this to have matched the screen here. We're just gonna just, uh, good luck, our opponent. And we are on the play, so let's see. So this hand is a little bit iffy, however, I mean, we don't have a two drop, but I definitely don't want to go to to six on this. 
and we're on the play. So I think this is okay. I'm just gonna close down this chat. Give a little more screen space. Um, this hand could be good. Um, it really depends on what we what we are up against. I think I would keep this hand in most situations in, in the dark, just because we, we do have a, a one drop in the Strong Wildwood. Um, okay, they just said good luck back. So we do have a one drop in the Strong Wildwood, and we do play a bunch of both one drops and two drops that we could draw. And if not, then we can just go, so like three drop into company, and then hopefully uh, that will be good enough. Also, you know, when the when you play the Aether Vial, it it it's, it just feels so bad when you don't have them in your opening hand. Okay, so it looks like we are up against Jund, um, and it looks like we have sort of like a, a the, one of the most perfect hands for that. We have things that are very resilient to their removal, um, even though I th believe that most Jund decks now actually are pay playing uh, Lightning Bolt over Fatal Push. So that makes the Miracle set a little bit worse, but it's still it's it's very good at blocking anything that our our opponent is trying to to do. Yeah, those are definitely John Colors. Dark Confidant. Okay. That is fine. That's the path. Um, I do actually think that we want to... I do actually think that we want to path them. Um, even though that means that they get a land, but the... The amount of card advantages they gain from the Dark Confident is just way too scary. So um, I think that I think we just want to path it straight away. So the reason why I didn't play Horizon Canopy out is because I want to make sure that my other race of Verge Thicket comes into play untapped. And also I don't really want to crack it because I want to have the mana available for the Collector Company. And then afterwards we can always... Um, Uh, we can always crack it later on. So they're thinking about what land to find here. They just found a swamp. And that's fine. We just passed the turn. The problem with, with you know, pathing now is that they, it opens up. Uh, it allows them to play Blood, Bloodbraid Elf. It's a two black. This is probably Liliana. So here, you know, the the Luxon Smiter would have been incredible. Because then we could have directly put that into play and then just attacked back into Liliana. But I think here we I'm quite happy with all the cards that we have in hand. So I think we can easily um get get rid of one of these horizon canopies. So if they have a thought seizer, they don't. Okay, thought seizer would have been pretty brutal. Um, but luckily they don't have that. So I don't see any reason to actually play the company out now. Um, we might as well just wait. And then I think if... I think we're going to... Yeah, I don't know which one. I don't know exactly which... Um, card to discard if they when they tick it up. Um, so they crack a fetch, probably get an overgrown tomb here. They do. If they have another land, they might just you know attack with the raging ravine. So, what do we get rid of here? I think we want to get rid of the Kitchen Finks. The the Mirror and Crusader is just such a good... It's just great value. Um, they really need to have Lightning Bolts to deal with it. My phone is... So there's a big goif. We go to our instep. We just hope that this doesn't whiff. So here's a Crusader and a Scavenging Ooze. So the Scavenging Ooze can help us make the 
Goyf Smaller, which seems like something we might be interested in doing. The Smile itself is not a great company target right here, I think. I think we definitely just want the Mirror Crusader, which will force them to use one of the Lightning Bolts in it, and then we have the backup one. Plus, we get a Scavenging Ooze. So I think, I think that's pretty good. And they just let us untap. That's interesting. So there's a Birds of Paradise. So now I think we... I think we, we're going to attack the Liliana with both of our creatures here. So they can, they can block the scavenging ooze, but then we just grow it and we, we can easily outgrow the, the Tarmogoy Fair. I don't mind spending a bit of mana doing so. Okay, they just take it. It seems. And we can always Finx and then take out um, the, the, the Tarmogoy from that way. So I quite like our position here. Oh, but I also quite like just playing out another Mirror Crusader. Ah, but then again, if they play... Let's just play another Mirror Crusader here. And then keep a green open in case that if they actually play their own Scavenging Ooze. And uh, yeah, we're definitely just win we're winning this race, that's for sure. we do another Forest. So if they just activate the region, oh, they have a blood braid elf. Okay, and they found a maelstrom pulse, but that can't target our scavenging ooze. So I think here we just shrink down the um, the tarmogoy for a little bit. Wow, that didn't actually do anything because the scavenging ooze comes back. Um, so if they have a bolt here, then that's a, that's pretty bad. But they don't. But we have, I mean, we can just play. So I think I, I'm okay taking five here. I think I'd rather just get this out of the way. They have another Tarmogoyf. Okay, but we... We can also just like witness. So what do we do here? We can either like witness, play the scavenging ooze, keep both of our miracle setters back to block the goifs. Um, and then we can just like start eating away and making, yeah, I like that. I think that's the best play rather than just getting like a path, you know, and just dealing with like one. We might as well just prepare for like the long game and just... Um, just shrink the goifs down completely. So I like not attacking with anything here because um, I don't really want them to like activate their raging ravines. Liliana here is fine as well. We can just, um, if the Liliana minus, we can just get rid of the, the eternal witness. We don't really care about it that much. So black, black, green, Liliana, Liliana of the Reveil. Okay. They might just tick it up here. Yeah. But that's fine for us because that's another thing we can eat um, with the scavenging ooze. So here it's very safe just attacking with one Mirror Crusader um, into the Liliana of the Veil. Vale. So I think we do so. Um, yeah, and we can just play this, this Thalia here. In case they draw like a spell, at least then they have to pay a little bit more for it. Yeah, so we're really showing here. This is, okay, so they just they just scooped it up. They they know that from this point on we just eat everything and shrink that goifs, and they don't really have a way to get back from this. Um, so yeah, really showing the power of uh, green white against um, the Jund Jund deck. So Red Capogenesis is going to be awesome. Um, I mean, all our cards are just perfect. We could consider taking in a Settle, the Wreckage. Um, 
We could take out the Thalias. The Thalias is a bit weak to um, Liliana of the Last Hope. And yeah, I mean, we might be better just to play the, the Canaanists than, you know, it's sort of like it stops Bloodbraid Elf as well. Could also play one rest in peace. But that sort of like shuts down our plan as well with the ooses and the witnesses and stuff. So I think I... Yeah, let's just try and take out these Thalias. I mean, they're good, uh, but they are quite weak to uh, Lidiana of the Last the, the, the last Hope. Which they, I think they tend to board in against this because they do expect us to play a lot of... Um, they do expect us to play a lot of uh, two ones. Also, like three ones. So, like if they if they still think we're playing Flicker Wisp, then that's obviously a good card to bring in. But um, jokes on them because we don't. John is just so powerful. I I, I definitely think that. The Bloodbraid Elf is, is was the most dangerous card to, to unban in uh, in modern. Okay, so we I mean we have we have some good cards here. Again, we don't have any one or two drops, which is a, a little bit unfortunate, but um, we have time to draw some stuff. And uh, we have the Liliana of the Veil protection. And them not playing a thought or anything turn one is is very good for us. So Yeah. They might just have like a bolt or something and they just want it to be to be ready to kill any sort of like birds we, we put in. Whether that be Noble Hierarch or Birds of Paradise. But yeah, look at all these anti junt cards, you know, just just uh, very efficient and so now we definitely want to we definitely want to draw a one drop or two drop here. I'm not I'm not happy with just keep drawing three drops. I mean we do play a lot of three drops, but because if they play a dark confident now, or they play a goif, okay. Goif is okay. Okay, but at least that was a, a path, so we could um if they play a Dark Confidant now, we could take care of it. Not too... So now I think we just have to... They drew a Thought Seize, eh? Do we care about this Tarmogoyf? Hmm. So they're probably going to take the collected company here right so i'm actually i'm actually not too bothered I, I think they can they can have a look i'm not too bothered with pathing this time ago right now because i do think that they should i think they should take the company otherwise they they just you know their plan is to trade one for one and, and now that they see the smiter they're probably not gonna probably not gonna play the liniana of the veil they might be reading the smiter actually Be so funny if they pick the smiter. I mean, the time ago is going to be big now. They took the crusader. Okay, that's very interesting. So they attack for three here. I don't mind taking three now and then. Um, if uh, if they don't play anything, we 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 just path it in a turn. I would rather. I I don't mind paying three life for that bit extra extra bit of information. Okay, so they just uh, they just path. Let's just path this. They just passed. I mean, we do play four mirror crusaders, so the chances of drawing another one should be pretty good. Um, so what do we do here? Do we do we just witness and take back the crusader, or do we wait with the witness? Or do we play the Hierarch now? The problem is they probably just have like a Bolton hand. So I don't hate just playing out the 
the witness and taking back the crusader. Then if they want to spend their bolt bolting the witness, then that's fine. I would much rather spend all of my mana doing this than um, you know, spending one mana playing a hierarch and then not really doing much else. So four mana. This is also an excellent blocker for Blood Red Elf. Might be looking at that Liliana of the Veil in the hand and thinking, what do I do with this? So they're forcing us to they're killing this and forcing to discard. So we just discard the hierarch, I think. Oh no, we should have discarded the the nope the smiter. Oh anyway, they scooped. Um <laughs> We should, of course, just uh, put down the smiter. Me all, almost fucking up my own, my own, uh, my own deck here. Um, yeah, but this configuration just great against Jund. Um, yeah. I mean, look at it. It's all, all these cards are good, good against Jund. So let's just uh, let's just meet uh, five uh, Jund opponents in a row. I'm actually happy they they can see it before they saw us uh, discarding the Noble Hierarch because that was a little bit embarrassing. I've had a long day and I've had a long week and I'm really tired and um, yeah, so that's probably going to be a few more mistakes uh, for you guys to make fun of. So let's just uh, say good luck to our opponent. And let's see what we got to play with. So yeah, we got turn one birds, turn two mirror crusader into hopefully turn three collect the company. So that should be great. So let's just do that. This might this bird of paradise might just absorb a lightning boulder, a fatal push here, turn one. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, Water Grave. So that could be Grixis Death Shadow. It could be Blue Black Control, Inquisition. Okay, so they can take a Crusader, but we still have another one. If this is Blue Black, then they're going to have a very hard time dealing with these Mirren Crusaders. That's a Wildwood. So let's just play out a Crusader and pass. So let's see if they are Grixis. Delta. Thoughtseize. Okay, so they take the collector company, but that's okay. We we got, you know, we got a Marine Crusader ready to beat down. It's not super ideal because we, we don't have any gas left in hand, but we have a lot of good cards to draw into. We got uh, Eternal Witnesses. We got more Collector Companies. Yeah. Lots of good stuff. If they're just straight up blue-black, then... I think that they are in big trouble. Unless they can get to a very quick damnation or something. I mean, we could also just draw one of our exalted creatures and then start attacking for a bunch. Um, okay, so let's just attack with the Crusader. Okay, so it doesn't look like they have that they have a lightning bolt. Another watery grave. Yeah, they might just be straight up um, blue black. Ooh, untapped. 
Oh, there's a Thought Scour. Okay. Thought Scour themselves. Find a Snapcaster Mage and another Thought Scour. We've got pretty good beats going here, though. Next turn we can attack with both the Crusader and the Wildwood. I mean, the Mirror Crusader against Blue Black is a pretty quick clock. That's a Death Shadow, okay. There's a big uh, Angler. That is a Gurmag Angler. Yeah, I mean, this could be a problem, but that's a Horizon Canopy. So we could just... Hmm. I definitely, we definitely want to attack here, and then we still have two blockers left um, to block the Death Shadow. Let's see what is best to play here. Probably just the Horizon Canopy. Because then if they don't go for the attack, then we could crack it and draw a card. Hmm. So what do they do here? So they attack just with the Death Shadow. Okay, so I think we just block with the birds. And then we use the mana to crack the Horizon Canopy. So that's a voice of resurgence, which is not bad. Yeah, you definitely can't. Okay. That's another horizon canopy though. Um Yeah, I think we just they might have a Snapcaster Mage here. But I still think we just have to attack with this Mirror Crusader. Okay, no Snap Custom Age. So let's just play this uh, voice of Resurgence. Because then in that case, if they actually have so here comes the Snapcaster, and they're going to Thought Scar themselves, which is fine. There's an Angler in the graveyard. That's good for us. So they are playing red, so they might have like team of battle rage. Which means I might, uh, maybe I should have cut them off from red. Hmm, not sure. Because I do want the mana for the wildwood. I guess I would still have it, but then I would have to pay life. They thought scour themselves. Maybe they're just trying to find the lightning bolt or something. They attack with those two. So I think we just block the death shadow. We get a token. No, 
another death shadow, okay. And then an angler, really? Tessica. Yeah, I mean, that's not great. Mm. So I guess we can draw something to kill the Snapcaster Mage and then attack with the Mirror Crusader. Maybe that's our best best hope here. Um, I definitely should have cut my opponent off red. Let's just do that now. Temple Garden is definitely not where we want to be. Can we even survive a crack back here? If we attack with the Mirror Crusader... No, we would have to... Well, we would go to one. Um, not great, not great. Path? Another Mirror Crusader. So what happens now if we block, block? So we block, block, we take 5, 9, 11. Um, I guess we just have to pass here then. Dismember on the token, and then yeah, we can't can't deal with that. Okay. Oh, that's the path. Okay. Of course. Um, oh, that happens. So, Death Shadow, huh? We definitely want the Thalia. Um, we probably don't want the Finxes. We might want a number of Smiters. Definitely want the Relic. Probably also Rest in Peace. Um, might cut an ooze. Maybe cut the witnesses. Hmm. So. Be something like this. Yeah, let's try it. Let's give it a go. Um, so we do have uh, we have a bit of like a mana denial strategy here with the, the ghost quarters and the arbiters. I think I like that. I think it's better than just mulliganing. And we do have a relic which can uh, at least slow down our opponent quite a lot. So yeah, I think this is a fine hand. Let's see what our opponent does. They go Water Grave, Thoughtseize, Serum Visions. Okay. Uh, wait, how to open the chat? Oh, there. So they put top, top, top. Okay. Oh, no, I don't want to leave the event. Um, so we force them to discard uh, to exile it. Then we just play the the arbiter out. We have a swamp. They dismember the arbiter. Okay. So we get make them dis exile the dismember. There's a Coco. So now the question is, what is more important here? Taking care of their blue mana? I mean, they were very quick to dismembering this Arbiter, right? So I think we just do that, actually. Um, just make sure they can't play any blue stuff. And then if they go like Inquisition, we get a free smart into play. So I think this is a quite a nice little play here. 
Yeah, you can't you can't activate the ghost quarter. You can't search with the ghost quarter. If they go thought sees here, then that's more of an issue. Okay, make them just make them exile. Just making sure that we we keep uh, cards away from that graveyard so they can't actually dredge. Oh, sorry, uh, delve, not dredge. Um, okay, so I think we, I think I like playing out a second Arbiter. Yeah, they don't seem like they have. I don't see any reason why to keep this untapped. I'm not in a great rush to crack this relic. They're gonna have a hard time with taking um fetching now. They might be writing something. Maybe they're just thinking. What are they thinking about? Meanwhile, we can just quickly go and have a look. Um, here, I just want to make sure that it's public. It is public. Great. Um, I guess I can check my text in the meanwhile. Not the... Okay. So they just decided not to do anything. So we attack for two here. Yep. Pass the turn. Steam vents. Okay. So now at least they can pay for one Arbiter, but they might want to Try and bolt one. Okay, the terminate one. Okay. So empty that graveyard. There's a ghost quarters. So I think we just coco. And I think we do it in our main in in our own turn so that in case we get something like an arbiter, we get something like a Thalia. So definitely think we do it here. Um, great. Okay, so there's a Birds of Paradise. So I think we just take the Crusader and the Thalia. And just giving them a lot of worry. So now they might have to spend their turn paying for the Arbiter to get to crack the Blastenmire. And then we just almost have lethal. And we actually have another ghost quarter ready. Um, in that case. So they pay for the Arbiter. They crack the, the Blast in my Okay. Finds a watery grave. Death Shadow. Okay. So that's another smiter. So I think now we just cut them off red um, to avoid lightning bolts, because otherwise they can take care of this mirror crusader. And then I think we just attack with the mirror crusader, and we got a lot of chump blockers. And we play out this, um, and then we just exile their steam vents and pass the turn. Okay, they have seen enough. Um, yeah, I think... I think this is good. Yeah, let's just go with this. 
I think the deck is actually functioning really well without the um, without the vials and just playing. Maybe like maybe six six mana dogs might not be enough. Maybe um, seven is better. But but I thought like for the first try, I'll just I'll just give it try uh, try six. We also yet to draw the Gavin Township, which can do some pretty cool stuff, especially with something like a Kitchen Finks. We can sort of like regenerate the kitchen things if if it dies and it comes back with persist um we can add another we can add a plus one plus one counter on it which then negates the minus one minus one counter so it's sort of like it's like reset it's back to back to start so five lands and two spells and they kept so if they have like a turn one inquisition our hand is just awful so I think I want to mold this. I mean, this is one more spell. A canopy. Even though this can draw us a card, I don't think it's correct to draw it. I think it's better just to draw whatever we would have drawn off the horizon canopy. So they go steam vents, they might just go serum vision. Yeah, that's fine. We really want like a turn one play. Or like some some sort of value. But I'm glad that we have something to deal with the um, with the death shadow. So top top, that's never that is never good. Oh, here's a rest in peace. Rest in peace is interesting. It sort of like shuts down a lot of what they're trying to do. But I mean, it doesn't shut down that death shadow, but it shuts down the other strategies quite well. What are they thinking? Maybe they're counting whether or not they can actually play out like Tessica or something. If this is like a thought scour, then yeah, that's exactly what they were trying to th see if they could do. Maybe we should have played this Temple Garden untapped in that case. Oh no, they just played nothing. Hmm. I think we just play a rest in peace here. And ask them to have something against it. No, they don't. Okay. So now we're in like in a pretty decent shape actually, because we can now we can if they play like a, a creature out now, then we can actually arbiter and path, which you know, just ensures that they don't actually um, Blood Crypt. Okay. That's a 1-1. One, one. Okay, so now I think we play an Arbiter. And then we just have, the, have a path ready. For the uh, for the for the death shadow. This is a thought sees. What are they thinking? If they do some sort of shenanigans where they try and kill, maybe I need to path my own arbiter just to make sure that I actually get to connect the company mana. Untapped. Oh, just to make the death shadow a little bit bigger. Should 
Should I block and then path my own arbiter just to unlock my company? Is that correct? Hmm. Yeah, it might be. That seems pretty bad though. <laughs> seems better just trying to path this death shadow and then yeah, that 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 doesn't seem right. Let's just try and kill this. Cause they don't have stop and deny. Well, I guess I can't pay for the one mana for stop and deny either. But they might just take them out because they know I'm not playing that many non-creature spells. Might be a little bit too situational. So they kill this and make and force me to discard. I think we just discard the other Arbiter. I don't know, maybe it was better to to path my own thing to make sure that my company was online, but I don't even know. Okay, they get a Swamp. Okay, well, here's a Canopy, so I think I would rather play it now. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons to main deck a company. So the Scavenging Goose is definitely dead. Thalia seems fine. Could also just go for two Smiters. Yeah, just go big. Just actually bring a clock. then pass and then if they tap out to play a Tessica or something they thought scour that's fine what do they exile another oh no or did they oh they they thought scoured me of course makes sense so they got rid of a Mirkusade and a Thalia So if we tech edge them, does that do anything? I don't think it does. If we do another tech edge, we can double tech edge them and get them out of red. But I mean, these two four fours might just do the trick. They can't really be bolted. Um, they can be dismembered, but I don't even know if the Death Shadow deck plays bolt over Fatal Push. I'm not sure. Not entirely sure. Let's see. We do have this path in case that they um, play like a big creature. If they have Liliana the Veil, they'll, they'll probably just play it. So what is going through their minds? Okay, so we just attack. Might have like a Snapcaster Major to block. Okay, the Dismember 1. Um, which is fine. So let's crack this canopy that's a ghost quarter it's not that exciting so let's just play this wild wood and then just threaten lethal here that's the thing about these death shadow decks though that you know they can just play a one mana seven seven and then have, you know, stop in denial to protect it. The best thing that can happen here is them tapping out for a Tasker. That's the best that, that can happen. But is that what's going to happen? I 
looks like something is happening. But what? Engineered explosives on three. Okay. Yeah, that works. Um, they might also... Okay, the good thing about them... Okay. So I think we just... Um, we just fire up this wild wood, and then we attack, and then we force them to kill one of these things. And then next turn, uh, we still have lethal with just one of the attackers. And we do still have this path to try and stop them. So they crack the explosives now. And then I guess they hope to draw a uh, death shadow or something or like a removal spell for the for the wildwood they might just have like a handful of delve creatures you know that is not completely unlikely Inquisition, they see the, the path, which is definitely annoying. Oh, there's a Coco. So the question is, do we force the issue and then next turn we have Coco? Or do we Coco now? And then we completely force the issue. I think we Coco now. So voice and what deals more damage? I just take this eternal witness. That's fine. It's not the most exciting card right now, but I don't think there's any reason to cut them off uh double red here. Oh, they want to cast a spell now. That's that's gutsy. I like it. Or maybe they have another um, engineered explosives. Can I kill lands? He's non land. Okay. Coligan's command. Wow, but now I just get two. Now I just get two two tokens. Oh no, of course not, because it's exiled. That makes sense. Um, yeah, maybe we just cut them off. Uh, an additional mana. In that case, they in that case they can't play a land and then play a Tasiga. And I guess it sort of like limits them in the number of spells they can cast. There's a bloodstain wire. That's another wild wood. It's not a bad draw. So we swing with the team. Do they play? I don't think they play Crypto Command. Coastlex return. Okay, so that kills 
two of my creatures. Doesn't kill the Wildwood though. So we attack. Cosex Return is a nice is a nice sideboard card. Watery Grave, and they just kill themselves. Okay. So, uh, two and zero oh so far. Been to some interesting games. Um, I don't think that our deck is necessarily the problem with our deck is that some of our si our sideboard cards hurt. They hurt us as well. So, like the rest in peace, for example, I quite like having it as a one-off because against certain, like uh, especially against like a deck that plays like a lot of recursion through Colligan's commands and like Snapcaster mages, and and they play all these Dell creatures. Um, but it definitely hurts us as well. Like we saw with like with the Voice of Resurgence and with the our Eternal Witness and stuff. But it, I think it hurts them more than it hurts us. So I think it's definitely worth adding at least one. In, in this matchup. But it could just be that the, the rest in pieces should just be relics of progenitors. I'm not sure. Um, you do occasionally run into uh, Dredge, and I think against Dredge, you, you definitely want rest in pieces. I don't think relic of progenitors is good enough. But against Jund and stuff, then relic is just amazing. So we are on the play, so good luck, have fun. We definitely want to play first. Um, ugh, this is an interesting one. I mean, we definitely need lands to get this to work. But if we ever draw lands, then this hand is then this hand is pretty nuts. So maybe that is maybe it's good enough. We'll see. Let's play this thicket. We have path up for any potential shenanigans. Glistener elf. Yeah, I think we just want to straight up path that. Infect. You don't see infect that often anymore. There's a temple garden. Okay, not bad. So we just play this voice. Our life total, total doesn't matter in this matchup at all. So we might as well just uh, very aggressively, e whenever we have the chance, very aggressively to uh, play with uh, uh, play with our life as a resource. There's a scavenger news. That is not bad. So I think we attack with the voice. Actually, scavenger news is pretty mediocre. In this matchup, actually, I think we definitely just want to play out the smiter and then just get the beats going, and then hopefully next turn we can play a collector company. So they miss the, and uh, basically what we're trying to avoid here is just we just want to like win before they draw another infect creature. That's a dried arbo and a glistener elf. Okay. Not great, not great. Here's a Mirren Crusader though. That is a pretty good blocker for the Glisten Elf. So let's attack. They take it. Let's play this Mirren Crusader. But if they can just like buff up their Glistener Elf like crazy and give it Trample, then um, we are in big trouble. Growth, growth. Apostle's Blessing. Ah, oh, the comments. Spicy. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's it. Okay, so we definitely want the Canonists. We definitely want the Thalia. We might want these Settles. 
We don't care about the oozes. I think Eternal Witness is just way too slow. Um, so it feels kind of strange bringing in more spells. But Zelda Records is just so good against um, Infect. So, yeah. Oh, Kitchen Finks is definitely bad. Witness is, might just be better. Because then at least we can get our paths back. Paths back. Yeah, I'm I'm happy trying this. Maybe 22 lands is just too little. But I don't know. With the birds and stuff, it's tricky. I think the humans deck plays like 18 lands. They don't play Coco. Well, some of them do. We'll see. I don't... I don't see Infect being a very good matchup, but um, definitely give it our best here. I mean, Smiter looks really bad as well. Apostle's Blessing, huh? That's cool. Yeah, Infect definitely Lost a lot of attention uh, after Gitaxian Probe got banned. I'm still really sad that Gitaxian Probe got banned. I was playing a lot of Grixis Delver. Um, I know it wasn't like a really good deck or anything, but I really enjoy playing it. And I feel like Gitaxian Probe was one of the cards that really made that deck work. But I understand why it's it's it would be too ridiculous. Um, I mean. I think there's other more ridiculous cards in the format, but I mean, Gitaxian Probe is definitely, definitely a ridiculous card. Yeah, this is fine. We we got Settle to deal with uh, them attacking. We got, you know, Man Acceleration. So I think this is a fine keep. Unless we get turn two, then yeah, but you know, that's not that, that's not that many decks that can actually deal with uh, and not draw from an Infect deck, you know, that's pretty hard to deal with. There's a Nexus, that's that's good for us, I think. There's a Smiter. So now we can just like, should I Ghost Quarter this? The problem is if I Ghost Quarter this, then I can't Company or Settle. So I don't think we should Ghost Quarter it, quarter it yet. So we play another Hierarch, and then we probably just attack with a Hierarch. And then we just have a Ghost Quarter ready um, in case they, they try something cute. And then on our next turn, we, we can keep up, collect the company and settle the wreckage. So depending on what our opponent does, we can... We can sort of like just act on our end step. Okay, here's a canopy. So I think again I just want to attack with... I think I just want to attack with one hierarchy. here. I think that's fine. Just get the beats on. Yep. So pass. They found a breeding pool. Okay. Another Nexus. So they're going to attack with the Nexus. I'm fine taking one Infect here. I don't mind too much. End of turn, we Coco. 
I'm in love with the cocoa. Um, we could just like arbiter arbiter, then take out the breeding pool, or we can go arbiter noble, just to have a bit more mana to play with. I like taking arbiter arbiter here. Then even if they have like a dismember, they, they just can't uh, deal with this. So attack, attack. And then I think now we witness and we keep up a ghost quarter. So play a witness. Take back our ghost quarter. Yep. And I think actually we just we just ghost quarter them straight away. So like very restricted to play they can play like one spell on their Nexus. And then next turn we can just do it all over again. We can just take another witness. So that's a Pendlehaven. Okay. Path is good here, so we just attack. So now we have lethal in two turns. They fire up the Nexus. They block an Arbiter. Okay. And they make itself bigger. They reach a genetic growth, their own nexus, just so they can try and fetch. That doesn't really work, though. Um, okay, so seeing that, I think we again just witness, and then we take out the other nexus. Pass, and then we just have lethal again. Okay, so we didn't even show them settle, which is a good thing. We just sort of like beat them uh, without ghost quarters and them maybe not drawing that well, but um, it's quite nice not having to show them the settle. But I think now on the, particularly on the, on the draw, I think we want to go down Athalia. But it's, what do we take in? Maybe we just can't. Nah, let's just keep it in. I'm just I'm worried they're not really getting to settle mana. But um, so what do we have here? We have turn one noble. Yeah, that's probably fine. I mean, if they kill us in turn two, they kill us in turn two. But that's not really anything. Something we can do anything about. Breeding pool, glisten elf. That's a path. So if we keep path up now, they only have four cards in hand. What are the odds? I think, I think we have to develop our board. Otherwise, we're not getting anywhere. And then next turn, we can keep up uh, path. So they dismember the noble hierarch, okay. And a graph digger's cage, okay. That's all like, that could be a reason why we should have taken in the um, uh, what do you call it? The pride mages. But I mean, this is fine. 
Um, we can, so now we can, what do we do here? They have two cards in hand. That shouldn't be enough to kill us. And if we play this Thalia out, they can only play one of them anyway. And then next turn we can have Ghost Quarter ready and uh, Path to Exile. There's a Foothills. They crack it straight away. They play the Nexus. They attack with the Nexus. And that's it. Okay. Um, do we attack here? I think we attack and then we just path the elf and then we kill the nexus with the ghost quarter. And then we we ask them to find another we ask them to find another infect creature. And they are out of basics. I'm surprised they fetched up a forest with that basic. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, with that fetch, actually. I'm rather surprised. Okay, so now we just attack with the Thalia. Oh, drawing a land here was really nice. Because now we can, now we can um, play the Mirren Crusader. And uh, really just get in there. Again, we don't care about our life total. Yeah, I need to. I need to be more. Graphic escapes. I don't know. I I didn't think that people that 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 it it actually saw as much play. Um, but I guess in this particular case, especially on the draw, the Pride Mage is probably better than uh, Thalia. I don't know. It's hard to say. Let's attack here with everything. And uh, just play out this smiter. I don't know what our opponent could have, but just in case. And uh, yeah. What do you got? What do you got? Okay. I think that's a concession. to say something was said oh, okay I can't see it um, okay so 3-0 and which is great that means that we get our uh, our money back which is not bad so let's see if we can uh, go the distance I was surprised that the, we actually managed to pull a win against this uh, infect deck but um, I'm happy we did, but it doesn't seem like a super great matchup. So, opponent, can we get an opponent, please? Uh, 
All right, we found an opponent. And no lands. Easy mall. Um, good luck to our opponent. Yeah, we definitely can't keep this. Yeah, that's better. Um, this is a turn to a Miracle Sailor. Gavany Township. Uh, I don't think we want more land right now. I think we just want gas. So um, I think we put that at the bottom. Ancient Cigarette. This looks like it's humans. Ooh. Oh, oh God damn it! I was I I thought that was a. Uh, Race of Earth thicket. Ah oh, well. Um, no turn to Moon Crusader for us then. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't see that that was Horizon. Uh, uh, Stirring Wildwood. Yeah, we're playing against humans. I think pre board, this is probably not a good matchup. Thalia is fine though. Path. I guess now we just play the birds and then we keep. Uh, no, we can't even path anything. We might as well just play this then. Pass. They play canopy. <laughs> the lands that they play in humans is so spicy. This is the freebooter, yeah. So the freebooter takes the path. That's okay though, because it's a little bit problematic to cast right now. So I'm okay with I'm okay with this uh, losing this path right now. And the noble hierarch, they're gonna attack for three. Yeah, I'm not gonna block. That's a smiter. Smiter is a pretty good blocker here, actually. Probably better than the. Uh, than the Crusader, to be honest. So yeah, we probably just wanna jam that out there. Three mana four four. It's yeah, that's that's always good. That's definitely not the worst. And now a Coco off the top could could actually uh, do a lot of work for us. Champion. Better late than than sorry, I guess. So now, what is this? Reflect the mage. I see. Yeah, that's that's the problem. At least we have something else to play. Just attacking with the Thalia. Again, don't want to run a block. Here's our own Thalia. The problem is if they just if they have um, Thalia's lieutenant right now, then that's going to be a problem. But I mean. We just we just have to do this right, and then hope to make some profitable blocks. Thalia's lieutenant would actually not be that bad here. Two Thalia's lieutenants would be a prob would be a problem, but just one would not be so bad. Okay, here it is. Well, I'm really good at predicting what my opponent is going to play. So they all get a counter. So now the question is, what do they want to do? They might just attack with a mm. freebooter. They can't really do anything at instant speed here. They can't path. 
Oh, they can path. Okay, so if they have a path to exile, then that's really bad, but I mean... Okay, they just attack with everything here. So I think in that case, we just block, double block the champion and then just take the rest. Go down to a very low... Um, life total, but I think this is just what we have to do. If they have a path here, then that's just... Uh, that's very problematic. So we go down to four. That's our path, um, which costs three mana. But we could path the kite self freebooter. Um. I mean, yeah, this is not great, but I think we just have to pass and then hope that our opponent makes a mistake. So they're going to crack the horizon canopy. Okay. Another Thalia's attendant here would be unbelievably bad. Um, but if they don't do anything, then we could just path the freebooter and get our path back. That's a cavern. That's good for us. Hmm. This Gavin Township would not have looked that bad on this board, to be honest. Is this a Reflector Mage? That's a Meddling Mage. So... Um... So now they know we have a spell. So that was bad of me. I shouldn't have clicked anything. I should just have thought about what to say, what the meddling mage could say, but um, I think irrespective of how this goes, I, I still just want to path the Kaisel Freebooter. And then they can they can path the other but I still want to get... I, I can't really deal with the flyer. That's the problem. So um, so now at least I got the other path back. Then they can say... Now I'll say path to exile. But then that's fine. Because then at least if I draw... Um, yeah, I don't know. But if they have another Thalys Lieutenant here, then we are in pretty big trouble. They might just attack with the Reflector Mage. Okay, they attack with the Thalia. So how do I do this? Do I... This is very problematic. I think I chump with the Thalia because then if I draw draw collect a company, then at least I can cast it. So I think this is like one of my only outs for actually actually getting back into this game. And there's Coco. So do I play the Coco now? I guess there's no reason to, right? We might as well try and draw our opponent into an attack. And this way it just looks like we have Stirring Wildwood open. Um, so, another Lieutenant. That Lieutenant is a disgusting card. Yep. 
And now they might just go for a full on attack and then maybe we can be lucky to draw into something that can actually save us. Um, So attack with just the Thalia. So we play the Collector Company. We get a Kitchen Finks. Kitchen Finks could be fine. And then we get the the, the Collector Company back. I guess this is okay. Get the cocoa back. Yes, please. Gain two life. Chump the Thalia. Gain another two life. They pass. We drew another collector company. Um, I guess we just pass again. Oh God, I don't, I don't even know how what we're looking for because, like, every time they draw, like another human. Okay, they just passed the turn. That's pretty good for us. So there's a scavenging ooze. Which is not bad. I don't want another Thalia. I might just want this Birds of Paradise. There's a canopy. So now we can I can eat two things with the ooze. So let's just pass the turn. This is gonna be a grindy one, I think. There's a champion that grows the tenants. End of turn. Let's play another Coco. Um, what do we want here? Do we just want like the noble hierarchs? Because then we can like witness back and do another company. I guess we just need to like try and outvalue our opponent here and just like gain life and gain some more life. Okay. So there's a voice of resurgence. So now we can start attacking with one bird as well. Just slowly chipping away of their life total. But have enough mana to cast the cocoa then one two three one two three four five yeah one two three four five and three for the witness so let's attack with the birds of paradise and then play Eternal Witness, get back another company, 
and then pass I wonder what our opponent is drawing because they're are they just like drawing dead so let's play another company we're going pretty hard we're going pretty nuts here with the companies actually there's an arbiter and a kitchen finks gain some life Um, crack the canopy. That's another cocoa. <laughs> okay, so again, just attack with one of the birds. Buff it up. Swing. This is pretty absurd. I I I I have to be honest. This is pretty damn absurd. Okay, so here's another Coco. Get a Mirror Crusader and a Noble Hierarch. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, we just attack for three in the air. With the birds. This is one of the most absurd things I've ever seen in my life. Um, yeah, let's just pass. We were so close to being dead. Um, I'm quite... quite it's quite remarkable how we actually managed to so like get ourselves out of out of this. Okay, so there's a reflector mage. What does this bounce? Bounce the scavenging ooze. Okay. That's fine. We have a lot of ways to chump. Uh, end of turn. We Coco for like the seventh time. Okay, so I think now the shenanigans are gone. So how many? They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blockers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attackers. It's actually not that amazing. So I think we can just we attack with a bird. Just like slowly chipping away. And then we're gonna play out these two voices. Um yeah. Keep the rest back to block. Meddling mage. Okay. Naming what? There's no point in saying click to company anymore. Eternal witness. Yeah. I mean, our opponent doesn't know we only play two, but but that's definitely a fine fine thing to name. There's another smiter. So let's just attack with one of the birds while we can. And then let's play a smiter. 
and another smiter. Okay. And then I think next turn we should have enough to just alpha strike, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have nine, ten blockers now. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that should be enough. We have 14 attackers. I mean, we could just play it safe. So we, they can't have path. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But let's just, let's just play it safe. And then we attack with a big bird. Down and put them down to one. And then play the scavenging ooze. And then pass the turn. Okay, so we got there. Awesome. That was that was one of the most insane things I've ever seen um, being played. So I think we take these Thalias out for sure. These don't do anything. Um, take the set of the wreckage in. Is it worth taking in a stony silence? I think I would rather just have a pride mage. Or do I care about their vials? Not really. Like if I don't really want to like if they play like a one mana thing, I don't really I don't know. I, I would rather just have like a pride mage then I think. The rest looks fine. So what do we have here? We have a we have our company. So another slow start, but yeah, I guess we're on the draw, so we have we have a chance to draw into like a, a one mana, um, like a bird or or a noble hierarch. So I think that this is probably okay. So they kept six. And they put the card on the bottom. Seacrum Coast, which is good for us. Um, and a two drop, which is also good for us. Not the best two drop in this matchup, but but uh, fine. Like it's it can block something. They kept a one lander. Okay, so all of a sudden now this arbiter looks really good. Because then we can just completely stop them from playing. Um, okay, they got an unclaimed territory. They have a two drop. They have a Thalia. Okay. So now we could ghost quarter them and kill the Thalia. And then next turn we could play a three drop. Or we can just go for the company. Hmm. I mean, they definitely drew this this land up the top. So, and they don't play that many lands. So, I think if we if we just get rid of their unclaimed territory, I think there's a lot of stuff they actually can't play. So, I think that's just the right play. I think that's the right thing to do. Then we path this, otherwise it's going to be very difficult for us to get to uh, company mana. Do another land. They did not. Um, okay, so we just attack with the Arbiter here. 
And then I think we play this Eternal Witness and we take back the Ghost Quarter. And then if they don't have a, if they didn't draw another land by next turn, um, then I think that should, then the opponent might just concede. So let's see. That's it. So yeah, okay. So so far so good. Um, let's see if we can find an opponent for the last match. See if we can find one as quickly as possible. As it is ten o'clock now. Okay, so we got an opponent. We are on the play. Good luck, have fun. We would like to play first. And what do we got here? We got a bunch of. Um, we have a. Yeah, I think this is fine. Um, we got mana to play our arbiter. We don't have mana to play the Finxes though, but uh, hopefully we'll find them. So let's just go storing wildwood. And then we play the ghost quarter out next turn with the arbiter because then in case if we draw another ghost quarter we can double strip mine them so stumping ground please play a tobias roll oh search for tomorrow this is going to be interesting Th there's another arbiter okay so that's awesome let's just make sure we keep an eye on this search So they need to figure out how to deal with this Arbiter before Search comes up. It might be they just have to Lightning Bolt. Let's secure a Tri Builder. Okay. There's a Thicket. Good draw. Getting our next second color here. So let's just attack. They don't block. Let's play the thicket. Play another arbiter. And let's just cut them off green mana completely here. So even if they have a bolt, they can't... Um, Search with the search tomorrow, and they can't use the secure tribe elder. And then we can just start putting in our finxes. But I think actually we would rather just go for the witness. Yeah, but they didn't even want to go there. Um, I understand. So. Velikut. They might play might play Blood Moons. So the Pride Mages are quite important. They might also play like Prismatic Omen. Um I think the Pride Mages are gonna be good. I don't think these smiters are gonna be very good. Um Thalia is probably fine. Mm, settle the wreckage. I don't know. I feel like if they play a, a primeval titan and actually attack with it, we are already so dead that um, the settle probably doesn't do much. Maybe just like a core firewalker. Probably better than Mirror and Crusader as well, actually. Just because they can't get bolted. And also like anger of the gods and stuff so maybe that maybe yeah yeah this this is probably fine i feel like our main deck is actually already pretty good against what they're trying to do so what does this hand do i mean it's pretty fast I guess we get to look at cards from this Horizon Canopy as well, but not that exciting. 
They go search. Search for tomorrow. Okay. I guess this hand is like a fast clock. I mean, this is like a turn to Mirror Crusader. Oh, it would have been so much better if these birds were Noble Hyrax, though, because then we could have attacked for, we could have attacked for a lot. So search kicks kicks down, ticks down. Um, this tectonic is, is going to be pretty good. I think we only play one tectonic edge. That's a tri builder. That's a pride mage. So maybe I just want to. What's the worst that could happen next turn? They could play something for five mana. That is not as bad. So I guess we just play this here, Mirror Crusader. That's pro green. Um, I don't think that's going to be super relevant unless they play like. Uh, Obsinath Baloth or like Thrag Tusks and stuff then then the pro green becomes pretty relevant but I don't know I found a forest oh, interesting oh I see why because otherwise the stump they, I'm going to kill the stumping ground Another forest, okay. Another stumping ground. So what are they playing here? Bolt that. Blood Moon. Blood Braid Elf, okay. That's, that's annoying, but it's not, it's not the end of the world, I guess, but. It's definitely not ideal. That's a ghost quarter though. So we can kill a bunch of their lands. So they have... So if that hand right now, if that's a land Primeval Titan, then at least we have a path for it. Mm. So I definitely want to check it now. Tickets play Scoos. I guess that's pretty good. Might as well play the Ghost Quarter then. Not to. Um, so definitely want to take Edge because we need to make sure that we're gonna. He needs to give them a hard time getting to Primeval Titan. And then play out the scavenging ooze which has potential to become really big with the creature there's like currently two creatures in the graveyard there's probably going to be three yeah there's, there's three now but if their hand now is just land primeval titan then oh, we're in a, not in a great shape we're not in a, in a really bad shape but we're definitely not in a good shape so they went straight to attack sir yeah, that's fine. Anger of the Gods. Okay. Yeah, that's not ideal. But... We can just play Noble... Canopy, birds, so at least now we have, I mean, we still have this path for a potential um, primeval titan, but it doesn't look super great for us. There's a Valakut. I think I like that Valakut very much. There's a thicket. Hmm. Let's definitely kill the Valakut. So 
so that we can play the thicket untapped. Then we play the pride mage. And then we attack with the birds, keeping up both path and a potential uh, crack with the horizon canopy. I think the best thing we could draw now would be like an eternal witness or um, collected company. So if they go Primeval Titan now, then we are in very bad shape. Or if they just have it, they might just have it. That's a Primeval Titan. So they find two lands. Probably find a Valakut in a mountain. Or oh, they just found mountain, mountain. Okay. So we path this end of turn. The problem is if they just start chaining Primeval Titans, then we're pretty dead. But I mean, at this point, we are we're so far behind. Um... It's another canopy. I guess we might as well crack a canopy then. There's a scavenging ooze. Um, which could actually be okay. So let's attack with the pride mage. And then let's just, let's just play out this scavenging ooze. So we attack for four. Which is actually not. It's actually a pretty good clock we got going here. So we have two potential activations here, which could which takes it out of anger range. Um, also can block a blood braid elf. So Valakut, and then Primeval Titan, a Roast, I guess we just eat some of their stuff. Just to gain a life. Okay, okay, so we're still in this game. I think we need to crack this and hope for a Coco or something. Arbiter. Arbiter helps. Um, it's not super ideal, but I mean, they have one card left in hand. We don't know what that is. That could just be another Valakut. I mean, if they start just the thing is like now, if they just draw mountains, they can just lightning bolt us. Which is not great. I wonder what they have in hand. I mean, I don't feel good about this game, but I mean, we're hanging in there. So that's always something. They draw like a, f a mountain. Or like an anger. Oh. Okay, they drew a mountain. They kill the pride mage. Rex age. Okay. I guess that blocks. I mean, that's a chump blocker, but... So we attack for three here. I 
I don't know. I feel like this is like the situation where now they have like two turns to actually find a Primeval Titan or something else uh, equivalent. They Okay, they actually block already. Let's play the Firewalker. So now we just gotta like cross our fingers here and hope that they they just don't draw anything exciting. But the problem is like anything they draw is gonna be good. Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah, that's a problem. That's one of those good draws, you know. It's a tribe Elder, which means they can find another mountain probably. I don't know how many mountains they actually play in their main deck, but. Okay, so here's a Ghost Quarter, so we can always kill the Valakut in response to the Secure Tribal tri Builder trigger. Which is a very good thing for us. Um, so this attack, attack. Okay. And pass. My computer is really struggling here. If they draw another Valakut, then we are pretty dead. Huh. What have they drawn? This is the search for tomorrow. Growth spasm. Search your library basic land card and put it on the developer tab, then shop your library. I see. Okay, so I think we have to force this secure a tri builder. Let's just kill this now. And then we can start attacking with the bird at least. Um, I'm curious to see if they even have more mountains left. They do. So, okay, they have at least five mountains. They probably killed the Firewalker here. Oh no, they killed a the Noble Hierarch. Interesting. Oh, because they don't want me to attack with the bird, I guess. Okay, so no more basics left, it seems. Right, okay. So they play eight basics in total. Okay, we still have mana, uh, enough mana to catch Collector Company. That's another noble hierarch. And that's the kitty. Hey kitty cat. So I think here we just attack with the firewalker. Forcing a chump luck. Oh they don't chump. Interesting. I think we keep this noble in hand in case that they find some way to kill I mean it's not it doesn't change the clock at all. Yeah, hi kitty. Just got uh company by one of the kitty cats. Primeval Titan? Damn it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now they probably find Velikut and some land. And kill the Firewalker. So now we have to draw something that can give our bird double. Oh, right. They just found two Velikuts. So if we find an exalted. Uh, creature do we ah, we didn't so next turn they can uh, they can find I guess there's no point in in giving up I 
bring our opponent down to, to one. Yeah, this was an intense game. Okay, so they attack and they search. Probably find another Valakut in the mountain. Just two mountains. Shoot me for three, six, nine, twelve. And then trample the rest. All right, so on to game three yeah we were we were just drawing dead here in the end um i think this i think this is fine i mean i think we have a much better chance on the play anyway so let's see let's see if we can get this to work to play first um, yeah I mean we got some ghost quarters going so we just need to like draw an arbiter but we got a turn one hierarch we can play a Thalia yeah this is probably all right it's not like the best hand I've ever seen in my life but but it's probably as good as it gets mountain bolt yeah okay that's also fine. So now we can just play this Thalia. Try and slow our opponent down. So draw foothills. No play. Huh, interesting. I think we just attack here. Just uh, stay aggressive. Gain some protection against board wipes. Um, we're ready with the ghost quarter in case something bad happens. An arbiter of of the of the top here would be amazing. Three mana, far seek. Okay. They're slowly ramping up. Arbiter, go. Scavenge news. Hmm. Scavenge news is not that exciting here. Um, they can't play Primeval Titan next turn. So maybe it's safe to just crack this horizon canopy now in hopes to find an arbiter or something. There's a pride mage. Okay, that is not what we wanted, but fine. Question is, do we want to play these? I think we just play the scavenging moves out because then it's a two turn clock, and uh, I feel like we just have to be ag aggressive here and hope for the best because we don't really. I mean, we have ghost quarters and stuff, but they don't really do much besides. Oh, sorry, Alex. So they could play an anger here. Go 
could also play Blood Braid Elf. Growth Spasm. Okay, they get a basic land. Avatar? No. Okay, so now we definitely just attack here again. And I think we keep up double ghost quarter um, for two potential Valakuts and then also path. Because this looks like our opponent is trying to keep this spawn to play their Primeval Titan. Which is fine. So um, I think this is this is fairly safe. Because if they do that, then we can just kill it and then we attack for lethal. The Drew Mountain. There's a Primeval Titan. <laughs> Hi, kitty. So what do you, what did they find here? Okay, just two. That makes sense. Except they're gonna have to crack them to actually kill me. Hi. The cat says hi to everyone. And we drew the, the last path. So, um, yeah, it looks like we, we got there. Let's see if our opponent says GG's. They don't. Okay. So, another 5-0. and oh. um, This time with the vileless green-white death in Texas. I think it's uh, I think it works really well actually. I don't think it necessarily needs the uh, the Aether vials. So um, yeah, uh, deck is awesome. We even against the matchups that I don't think are very good, like uh, Infect, we still managed to pull through. Um, I think I played reasonably well. Let me guys let, let me let me know um, if you think that I did anything. In particular, that you guys thought was really, really horrible. Um, but anyway, um, I'll be back soon. Hopefully, I might give this another try, actually. Um, maybe try and play a little bit around with playing three birds, like playing seven mana dogs in total. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to have to try and, and figure that out. But yeah, if you want to see more, please like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment below. And I, I normally do my best to reply to everyone. And I will see you around.